Previously on Judd Wag. Oh boy, technology. It was about ready to go live and then I had some sort of computer crash on this iMac and I was trying to bring things up and I realized that I could do it on another computer. So anyways, this is the AV Geeks Lunchtime Streaming Show where... Technical problems are just part of what we do. Um, yeah, this is uh, the show before Easter, and so I have some uh, uh, Easter and egg-related films to show you. This one's a film strip. Enjoy. Imagine you're a food scientist looking for the almost perfect food. It must contain most of the nutrients required for good health, and yet be economical. It must be flavorful all alone, and yet be versatile enough to be used in countless ways. And it must come in its own package. But after a long search, you discover that nature has already provided what you're looking for. It's the egg. Eggs. They're incredible and edible, and you can use them in almost endless ways. You can scramble them, fry them, poach them, bake them, cook them in their shells. You can turn them into omelets, custards, souffles, or mayonnaise. You can use them for humble but essential tasks like holding meatloaf or croquettes together. Or they can become elegant cream puffs. The meringue on the pie, the icing on the cake. And eggs are right any time of the day, not just at breakfast. Try an egg burger for brunch. Or hard cooked eggs for a dieter's lunch. For dinner, eggs can go into a hearty casserole. After a game, invite the gang and let everyone make an omelet. Eggs are so versatile you can use them any time for any occasion when good food is in order. Whether eggs become the simplest or most elegant of dishes, they all have a common origin. One of the 300 million laying hens in the United States. These hens are specially bred by hatcheries for this purpose for egg producers in almost every part of the country. The old days of collecting eggs from the nests of angry hens are over. Modern laying houses are home for thousands or hundreds of thousands of birds. The hen's diet is carefully controlled by poultry scientists and nutritionists. Layers eat specially compounded feed to assure strong shells and good quality eggs. Commercial hens are no longer allowed to run loose in barnyards where an uncontrolled diet can result in eggs of inconsistent quality. A hen lays an egg almost every day. In many operations, each egg leaves the cage automatically. It is collected by a modern automated conveyor belt. Collected eggs move immediately to a processing area, usually located on the same premises. Here, eggs are thoroughly washed. Dirty eggs don't go to market. The washing removes the egg's natural bloom, a protective coating. So modern processing methods treat the eggs to replace nature's protection with a harmless, natural, tasteless, colorless, odorless oil covering. Eggs packed in cartons marked with the United States Department of Agriculture seal have been inspected by the government. Some eggs are actually opened and their contents examined for quality. Every egg we buy in the store is inspected by a process called candling. Trained people look for tiny imperfections in the shell, check the size of the air cell, and the interior quality of the egg. Eggs not perfect are called undergrades, and they're removed. Most undergrade eggs are safe to eat and find their way into the dried or frozen egg market, but they cannot be marked USDA grade A or better. Next, eggs are weighed automatically and sorted by size. Strict standards for egg size have been established by the government and they're clearly marked on the package. Automated equipment then packs inspected and weighed eggs in cartons that are specially designed. 
These cartons cushion the eggs from bumps and jolts. Packaged eggs are cooled to approximately 45 degrees. Then they're rushed to stores and restaurants, often within 24 hours after they were laid, but usually within 36 hours. Eggs are fresher than ever these days. The ones you buy in the supermarket may be fresher than the ones people used to buy out in the country. In your supermarket, eggs are stored in refrigerated display cases, ready for shoppers to purchase. Now, storage is up to you. You should be able to keep eggs fresh in your refrigerator for four or five weeks. Keep them in the original carton, in a section of the refrigerator where the temperature is constant. Those special egg slots in the refrigerator door are subject to drafts every time the door opens, so they're not really the best spot. Eggs won't lose any of their nutritional value, even after four or five weeks in your refrigerator. In fact, the egg packs a nutritional wallop that makes it one of our most perfect natural foods. Eggs are an important and relatively inexpensive protein. Proteins are the building blocks of your body. The amino acids in protein enable your body to build cells. That's especially important for people whose muscles and minds are still growing and developing. In fact, the protein of the egg is so nearly perfect that it's often used as the standard against which other protein-rich foods like meat, milk, and cheese are measured. And it's so easily digested that it's often recommended for the very young and the sick. Eggs contain other necessary nutrients, all the minerals and all the vitamins, except vitamin C. Eggs can do all this and still remain low in calories. Say you're a 97-pound weakling trying to develop a better body. Would the low-cal egg be right for you? It would, because eggs can help build muscles and other tissues. Even if you're a 197-pound fatling, eggs are the right food for you. They provide protein and other essential nutrients for comparatively few calories. In addition, they give you the feeling of fullness that makes dieting a little easier. Now that you know all the reasons for eating eggs, it's time to take them out of their carton and to start cooking. There are several general rules to remember when you cook eggs. Too much heat can toughen them. Use a moderate to low temperature with exact timing. When eggs are cooked at too high a temperature or for too long at low temperature, egg whites shrink and become rubbery. Yolks get tough and their color may turn gray-green. There are five basic ways to cook eggs. They can be scrambled, fried, cooked in the shell, poached, and baked. There are some important cooking tips to remember about each of these methods. Let's scramble some eggs first. When the buttered skillet is hot enough to sizzle a drop of water, pour in the eggs. As the mixture begins to set, move it gently with a pancake turner. The idea is to form large curds with moist insides. And you'll need to dish up the eggs before they're dry. Remember that they'll continue to cook after you take them out of the skillet. The trick to frying eggs is, first of all, being careful not to break the yolk. You'll also need to turn down the heat right after you put the eggs into the skillet. Eggs cooked in the shell, either hard or soft, should not be boiled. Cover the eggs with water and bring the water just to boiling, then turn the heat off. Let the eggs stand in the hot water 15 minutes for hard cooked, 3 to 4 minutes for soft cooked. If before cooking you poke a small hole in the large end of the egg with an egg piercer or tack, it will help keep them from cracking and make them easier to peel. Quickly cool the eggs by running cold water over them. Poached eggs are tricky, but fun. Boil water two inches deep in a pan, then reduce the heat to keep it simmering. Break the eggs, one at a time, into a dish and gently slide them into the water. After three to five minutes, lift them out with a slotted spoon. That way the water will drain off. Baked eggs are a good way for a beginner to make an elegant looking dish. Preheat the oven to 325 degrees. Break the eggs into oiled baking dishes. Try to use small dishes for individual servings. They'll take 12 to 18 minutes in the oven. 
The trick in cooking an omelet is to get the uncooked egg to the bottom of the pan by keeping it in motion. Another trick is to have the pan hot enough to sizzle a drop of water. An omelet is one dish that'll be delicious even if it isn't perfect. You see, omelets that fail are scrambled eggs. After the mixture begins to set, draw the cooked edges to the center so the uncooked egg can run to the bottom. At the same time, slide the pan back and forth over the heat to keep the mixture moving. You don't want it to stick to the pan. By now, the bottom is done and the top is still moist. If you're going to have a filling, this is the time to put it on top. Use cooked cubed ham, sautéed mushrooms, shredded cheese, sour cream and chives, or even fruit for a dessert omelet. Now is the time to fold the omelet. Some people do the folding with a pancake turner. Fold one side of the omelet over the filling. Then you flip the omelet out by turning the pan upside down over the plate. An omelet like this looks and tastes impressive. Once you learn the easy tricks to making an omelet, you'll never forget them. It's like riding a bike or ice skating. Now you're on the way to knowing how to cook eggs. There are only a few more things to remember. Eggs have properties that make them very useful ingredients in many other foods. Some of these important properties are thickening, leavening, binding, and emulsifying. Custard, either baked or stirred, depends on the thickening property of eggs. A baked custard will gel and hold its shape, while a stirred custard thickens to a sauce. The leavening property of eggs helps some dishes to rise. If egg whites are beaten just right, they'll hold lots of air. All that air helps make angel food cakes and souffles high and light. Eggs can bind other ingredients together and help them hold their shape. Dishes like meatloaf and croquettes stay together because of eggs. You know that vinegar and oil always separate, even after you shake them up. But if you add the oil very slowly to vinegar and eggs as you heat them, they become mayonnaise. This is called emulsifying, bringing two natural strangers, oil and vinegar, together on friendly terms. Now you've got most of the information you need to start cooking. Remember, whether you make a simple but satisfying egg sandwich, or a romantic quiche Lorraine, or a spectacular dessert souffle, you're using one of our most perfect natural foods. Eggs are nutritious, low in calories, economical in price, and easy to use. It's no wonder they've been called nature's original fast food. Now that you know how, you'll be able to use them in countless dishes. Break the egg out of its shell, and you'll have a kitchen helper that'll always be there when you need it. Thank you, American Egg Board. Um, so that film strip was faded red. And so I did some color correction, but what happens when you do that is yellows become green. So that's why the eggs look green and just look gross. Um, but anyways, I love that, that film strip. Um, and what I had to do is I had to scan it with a, uh, 35 millimeter film scanner, not, not a motion picture scanner, but a, uh, still scanner. And then... I recorded, digitized the soundtrack, and then I used software to sync it up. So every time it beeped, then it, it rolled the ne to the next frame. So much work. Um, <clears throat> I'd love to figure out a way to hook up a camera directly to a film strip projector and then just do it manually <laughs> because it would be so, we'd be able to do so many more. I mean, that was like probably four hours worth of work uh, with all the scanning and all that stuff. Uh, here's another film about eggs. Eggs. Enjoy. These long, low buildings are part of a large egg farm. 
This egg farm has many laying houses, just like this one. This is Mr. Tom Williams, a helper. Mr. Williams takes care of all the hens and the eggs in this house. The hens stay inside the house all the time. They never go outdoors. Inside this house, the hens eat and lay eggs. They walk and run and rest. Everything in the house is clean. There's good light and sunshine. There's plenty of fresh air. Mr. Williams cleans the water pans every day. The hens always have clean, fresh running water. Hens that lay lots of eggs drink lots of water. These hens are healthy and strong. Ground up corn cobs cover the floor. They are dry and clean for the hen's feet. This helps keep eggs clean. Each hen has a band on her leg with her number on it. It takes many buckets of feed for thousands of hens. Whole grain, such as oats and corn, is good food for hens that lay eggs. Into this trough goes enough feed to last three days. And now, condensed buttermilk, almost as thick as butter. condensed buttermilk and dry grain mash. Hens like these together. The hens peck and peck at it. They eat all they want. A hen needs something gritty to grind her food. This oyster shell is gritty. It also helps to make strong eggshells. These hens get the best of care. These hens lay the finest of eggs. Mr. Williams gathers eggs from open nests. He works quickly, but carefully. In the open nests, hens are free to come and go. Many hens may lay eggs in open nest. The helper gathers the eggs five day. Fresh eggs clean shells. In the other end of the house there are trap nests. This hen goes into the nest. The door closes behind her so she can't get out. Which nests will these other hens choose? It won't be many minutes until each hen in the trap nests lays an egg. Mr. Williams empties the nests many times a day. He wears an egg apron to carry the eggs. He keeps both hands busy opening the door, taking out the hen and the egg, and marking the chart. Here's a hen that has laid an egg. Here's the egg. Here's the hen's number. The helper marks the time when he takes the egg. Three days a week, the helper weighs each egg he gathers from the trap nests. This is an extra large egg. If the egg is large, and if the hen lays one nearly every day, she's a very good laying hen. These hens seem to be looking for nests, too. They walk, and they stop, and they look. 
Which nests will they go into? Now let's see what Mr. Williams does with the eggs he has collected. All the eggs go into thick paper cases which keep them from breaking. This case of eggs is ready for the cooling room. The egg cases have large holes so the air can move about the eggs all the time. All day long, the helper cares for the hens in his laying house and gathers and cases eggs for the cooling room. In the cooling room, the cool air keeps the eggs fresh. They stay here two days or longer. Then the eggs go into the candling and grating room. Some eggshells become a little dirty. The electric egg cleaner takes off dirt. Small rollers hold the eggs against whirling wheels. These wheels take off dirt and leave the shell clean. A final touch with the sandpaper brush cleans the ends. Eggs and more eggs. Eggs from the cooling room right along on a conveyor. A tray of three dozen eggs onto the conveyor. Eggs, clean and white. Dozens and dozens of eggs. One by one, the eggs roll off the conveyor to a moving belt. The belt takes them to the candling machine to be tested. A man looks at each egg in front of strong lights. Good, clear eggs like these pass the test. This is how a good egg looks to the man at the candling machine. Sometimes he finds an egg that has a spot in it. The spot doesn't mean that it's a bad egg, but he takes it out. This egg has a shell that might break. The man at the candling machine takes out all the eggs like this. They will be sold as frozen eggs or dried eggs or powdered eggs. This machine separates the eggs according to size. The extra large eggs come off the machine first. Next, the large sized eggs. Then, the medium sized eggs. And then, small eggs. Each size is kept together as the helpers pack the eggs. Some go into large shipping cases. Some into cartons. The small end goes down, the large end up. Dozens of fresh eggs, cartons closed, sealed with a government label of quality and size. All eggs go into fiber cases holding 30 dozen eggs. This man seals the cases of eggs and they are ready for shipment. Every day, many thousands of eggs are wheeled out to the loading room for shipping. The covered truck protects the eggs from the heat of the sun. Hot sunshine would spoil eggs quickly. So that is how we get eggs from the egg farm. Eggs on their way. Perhaps the truck will go to the railroad station and a train will carry the eggs to the city. 
Or perhaps they will go over the highway directly to the food stores where we may buy them. Clean and fresh and good to eat. Of course, that's our good friend James Brill. James Brill. Um, I always forget his name because it seems very common. It's not very unique, but uh, his voice is very distinctive. If you know educational films, of course, he's the voice of Irpy and then early Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, pretty great. Okay, we're going to do an experiment. Uh, so we scanned a film from the Cornet uh, collection, and it is not a Cornette film, but they distributed it under their, one of their labels, Perspective Films, and so they got a license to do this, uh, so it's definitely copyrighted, and it might pull us down, so we're going to try it, and we're going to see what happens, it's so appropriate, and features Burl Ives, so this is the Rankin and Bass, of First Easter Rabbit. Enjoy. Surprised to see me here instead of Santa Claus? Well, I can't say that I blame you since it is Christmas here. Me? Just call me GB for now. Yep, I'm back in time, many Christmases ago. And right there in that very house is where our story begins, the story of the first Easter rabbit. And you know, we came within a hair's breadth, if you'll excuse the pun, of never having an Easter rabbit at all. Don't remember, do you? You know all about Christmas and Christmassy things. Like how Santa came to be, Frosty, and Rudolph who guided the sleigh. But how about that rabbit who comes every Easter day? See that little guy with a sprig of holly in his stuffed paws? That's one special rabbit. Though I admit, he may not look like it right now. He was a Christmas present for a little girl named Glinda. Oh, Mommy, I love him. Thank you. I love him. I'm glad, dear. You'll have to think of a name for him. I will, but for now I'll call him Stuffy. Oh, look, it snowed last night. Can I go outside now, please? Yes, dear, but be sure to bundle up. Meanwhile, in the nearby woods, a trio of real live rabbits were hatching a ridiculous caper. Now, let me get this straight. We're gonna dig a long tunnel under all the carrot patches in the neighborhood while nobody's around. And when spring comes, we're gonna come back and steal the carrots from underneath. Totally undetected. We come not, friends, to steal your hearts, but your carrots. You've now met spats, whiskers, and flops, three of the slickest con bunnies around. Alas, my men, behold that silly-looking rabbit sitting over there. Hey, look, he's strange. He hasn't got any hind legs. 
His odor is unsniffable, undetectable. He ain't a rabbit at all. He isn't real. But I am real. I am. I am. Poor Stuffy. He knew he wasn't real like the other rabbits, and that made him very unhappy. But he was Linda's favorite toy, and as the months passed, so did his sadness, because he was loved. But one day, something happened that was to affect everybody's life. Little Glinda took ill. I'm afraid it's scarlet fever. Oh, dear. My poor little girl, what can I do? Well, the first thing is to burn all of the bedclothes. And, oh, yes, that old stuffed rabbit. Burn it all at once. Now, taking away a child's favorite toy is no easy matter. And how would she ever explain to little Glinda that Stuffy had to be... Well, you know, even I hate to say it. Oh, dear, it's getting late. I think I'll leave all this for burning tomorrow. Our rabbit friend thought to himself, what's the use of being loved if it all ends like this? Who, who are you? My name is Calliope. I take care of all the playthings that the children have loved. And when they're old or worn out, <laughs> then I come and take them away with me and turn them into real. Why? Wasn't I real before? You were real to the little girl who loved you. And now you should be real to everyone. Stuffy was mystified, but he hadn't heard the most important part. Now that you are real, I have a special mission for you. You have been chosen to be the first Easter rabbit. But why me? I'm nobody. And why do we need an Easter rabbit? A good question, wouldn't you say? But Calliope had a good answer. She explained to Stuffy why all the holidays of the year needed symbols to help people remember them. Springtime needs someone to remind all the children of her special holiday. They could form the lovely habit of saying Easter's here cause there's that rabbit. There's that rabbit taking some blue from the sky. There's that rabbit mixing a buttercup dye. There's that rabbit painting his green everywhere. That rabbit There's that rabbit. that rabbit Helping the spring do her tricks There's that rabbit Chiseling chocolate chicks There's that rabbit, that rabbit. Far from your typical jack Each year he'll be back that rabbit. Easter needs that funny, bunny like Christmas needs the tree. It's a fact, I'm sure you'll agree. Easter needs a little old me. <laughs> There's that rabbit. There's that rabbit. Playing his egg rolling game. There's that rabbit. There's that rabbit. Everyone's calling his name. There's that rabbit. There's that rabbit. Easter's his garden to tend. Our cottontail friend. That rabbit. That rabbit. That rabbit. And to begin, you must go to Easter Valley, where the golden Easter lily blooms. And it's always springtime. It's over the hills to the west of the sun and beyond the third mountain. <laughs> but that someone will show you the way. Easter is only two weeks away, so hurry, 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 hurry. But beware, beware of zero. Zero, 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 zero. But who? How? Oh, wait, don't, don't go. I have so many questions. Think I'll begin with a hop. He's 
coming around, just a nasty bump on the noggin. What's your handle, kid? My name? It's, uh, it's... Gee, I, I almost forgot. <laughs> I'm the new Easter rabbit. Boy, he's a dude, isn't he? And, uh, where were you hopping to so madly? I'm off to find Easter Valley, where the golden Easter lily is. And, hmm, golden Easter lily, eh? <laughs> Excuse us for a moment. Since you're obviously not in the best of health, my companions and I feel it our duty to accompany you on your journey. Gee, that's great. Let's get started. But beware of zero? What was that? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. But it was something indeed, for the Easter rabbit had remembered Calliope's warning about zero. Bruce? Bruce? I'm coming! Ooh, ooh. Zero! Bruce? What have you found out about the road into Easter Valley? Did the elves know anything? Not a thing, not a thing. I give up. You see, Zero and Bruce were in charge of keeping the North Pole nice and white. Everything was all lovely and covered with snow except Easter Valley. Zero had never been able to find the secret road into Easter Valley, and so it stayed green all the year long. We can't give up, Bruce. We just can't. There has to be a way. <laughs> Well, by the time our friends had reached the third mountain, they were totally exhausted and ready to turn back. I say, it seems that bird is indicating a direction to follow. What have we got to lose? Someone will show you the way. She's leading us away from the wall. If you ask me, we're barking up the wrong tree. What do you think, Flops? I'd say we were barking up the wrong tree. The tree. It must be hollow. Why doesn't one of us give it a try? I shall be as expeditious as possible, okay? And be quick about it, too. Hmm, if my calculations are correct, he should reach the other side just about now. I am calling you. Hang in there, Flops. We're coming over. Everything you could imagine was there. And one person who seemed downright out of place, Santa Claus. <laughs> Just trying to be neighborly. You see, I'm all finished with my job, and I had a little spare time, so I thought I might be able to help you get started. But we'll never be able to do the job in time. There are so many boys and girls all over the world, and we only have a few weeks. Well, why not pick just one small town for a test? Then next year you can tackle them all. That's what I did first time out. Great idea, Santa. And I know just the town. Excuse me for butting into the festivity, Santa, but what's in it for us? Giving presents is a talent. One that the three of you have obviously never had a chance to explore. Why not try it just once? You can start by giving just a little gift of love to a child. You'll be surprised at how much you'll get back in return. You won't regret helping me, fellas. Uh, just one thing, Santa, sir. Is he really the first Easter rabbit? <laughs> well, indeed he is, Spats. Now I must be off. Blitzen! Good luck! <laughs> Good luck! Ow. Well, they've gone and done it, Bruce. Somehow, they've managed to get into Easter Valley, and they're bound to find the Golden Lily. We've got to find a way in. 
Crafty old Zero knew one thing that no one had bothered to tell the new Easter rabbit, that the golden Easter lily kept the valley warm and green all year long. If it were to disappear, springtime would disappear with it. so glum, chum. Oh, it's nothing. It's just that I've been thinking about little Glinda again. How is she, Doctor? She's sleeping now. She's going to be just fine. Oh, thank you, Doctor. That's, that's the best thing I could hear. Oh, I forgot. She seems to be mumbling something about somebody called Stuff or Stuffy or something. Oh, he was her favorite toy. <laughs> A silly old stuffed rabbit. Oh. Well, I'm sure she'll forget about it in a few days. Now, you spend a little time looking after yourself for a change. Goodbye, Doctor, and thank you. Stuffy, oh, Stuffy, you've come back, you've come back. Linda, what are you doing out of bed? And what was that noise I heard in here? Oh, Mother, it was Stuffy, he came back, he came back. And he was really real. And there's going to be a parade and everything on Easter Sunday. Uh, come now, dear. Let's get back into bed. And I'm going to wear my new pink dress and my new straw bonnet that you got me. Mother, all of my clothes, where are they? Glenda's mother had no choice but to tell her the truth. Don't cry, Mother. Who needs silly old parades anyway? Oh. Darling. Oh. It's that tree down there. It must be hollow. Ooh, ooh. Uh, that's the way in the Easter Valley. I'm sure of it. Excellent, Bruce. Excellent. <laughs> Tomorrow, Bruce. Tomorrow will be the end, the end of Easter Valley. <laughs> well, the next day was Saturday, the day before Easter Sunday. I think we shall have a white Easter if my eyes do not deceive me. A white what? Hey, look, it's beginning to snow. Yeah, it's really coming down. Now, now I've got it all. <laughs> the valley and the golden lily are mine. Gee, Zero, are you just gonna leave them snowed in like that? Ooh, ooh, they may never get out. Bruce? Who cares? <laughs> Let them all freeze for all I care. <laughs> Bruce was beginning to have second thoughts about what they had done. Bruce decided there was only one thing left for him to do. So he rolled, getting fatter by the minute. It's as if someone out there doesn't like us. Uh, oh, it's uh, stuck. The snow must be up to the roof. I can't budge it an inch. Santa, Santa, ooh, ooh, uh, I gotta speak to you. Bruce told Santa the situation, and Santa knew what he had to do. Ahoy, down there. Come on up, it's me, Santa Claus. Santa Claus! I know what's happened. Bring everything up the chimney and begin loading the sleigh. They loaded all the eggs and baskets and bonnets onto the sleigh, and just as it was getting dark, they had finished and were on their way. He came. Stuffy was here. Mother, mother, look. And there's a note with mine. It says, don't forget our date. Main Street and 5th Avenue at 12 noon sharp. Well... Morning, Elizabeth. 
Why, good morning, Doctor. We didn't expect you today, being it's Easter Sunday and all. <laughs> Jonathan, please. And this is not a professional call. I brought these for you and Glinda. Uh, uh, Jonathan, you shouldn't have. Oh, it's beautiful. Can I try it on, Mother? Oh, of course not. Now hurry. Uh, the parade starts at noon. The news is all over town. But how did you know we needed... <laughs> A little bird told me. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw you look quite so pretty before. Never saw you dressed quite so lovely. What's more, I could hardly wait to keep our date this lovely Easter morning. And my heart beat. As you came through the door For In my Easter bonnet With all the frills upon it I'll be the grandest lady In the Easter parade I'll be and when they look you over, I'll be the proudest fellow in the Easter parade. In your Easter bonnet, with all the frills upon it, you'll be the grandest lady in the Easter parade. I'll be all in clover, and when they look you over, I'll be the proudest fellow in the Easter parade. On the avenue, on the avenue, Fifth Avenue, Fifth Avenue, the photographers will snap us, and you'll find that you're in the Rota Gravure. Oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bond and of the girl I'm taking to the Easter. Miserable roly-poly snitcher. When I get my hands on you, I will melt you down to a tennis ball. You will do nothing. Now, I'm warning you, Zero. Either you put the golden Easter lily back in the valley so that springtime can come back, or I'm moving out of the pole. I've got a good offer from the South Pole, you know, and I've been considering it. Nah. You lady, you'd leave me all alone here? No elves, no Sunday night dinner with Mrs. Claus's home cooking and those little noodles at home. No midnight rides with the reindeer. Just me all alone here by myself, by myself. <laughs> what good is all of this? What good is anything without friends to share it? <laughs> I'd even miss Bruce. Oh. <laughs> hey, who's that? Me? I'm Zero. Sorry to drip and run, but this weather is bad for my health. Bye. And, and, and oh, yes. Happy Easter. Gee, he doesn't seem like such a bad guy. I wonder what all the fuss was about. Well, at least this time we've got a year's start. Huh, Whiskers? Right you are, G.B. So you found me out at the very end. 
That's right, I was stuffy. Many, many years ago, that is. And so the Easter lily brought eternal spring with it. The chickens could lay their eggs and the world would know that next year and every year, I'd be back again. Happy Easter! That was a muddled mess, but it was all worth it for that last little logo stinger uh, at the end, which is deep in my subconscious during that time in the uh, in the seventies and the sixties where they would have those stingers um, with that logo. Oh, it's so great, so great. But uh, this, if you looked at the credits, lots of, of cartoon voices. Uh, in there, um, Paul Fries, Stan Free, uh, Freeberg, um, Don Messick, uh, they all sh- kind of show up l- in lots of animation in the 60s and 70s. Um, but, oof, what a mess. That was, <laughs> that was really a mess. Um, and the kid actor was, it was horrible. It was so bad. I guess they were just waiting for her to get the lines right. And they were like, well, you know, there's no emotion, but it's okay. Because she got the lines right. She nailed them. (laughs) That's why, (coughs) excuse me, that's why oftentimes you will have a woman voicing uh, children. Because uh, an adult woman knows how to emote and act. And little kids, not so much. It's, it, you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but that was, oof. Uh, so anyways, um, thanks for joining us. We'll be back on Monday, and uh, we'll show you some stuff. And uh, what am I going to show you next? Oh, yeah. Um, happy Easter if you celebrate. If you don't, that's fine. Um, this is the time of year that I look forward to getting black jelly beans. Um, that is my... Um, one Easter thing that I love and I will, uh, we have Wegmans here in Raleigh and Wegmans has a giant package of, of just black jelly beans that I, and just so you know, uh, it might be too much information, but just in case, if you eat that many black jelly beans, your poop turns green from the dye. FYI. So, uh, everybody have a great, uh, Easter or whatever, and we will see you on Monday. Take care, everybody. Bye.